So, with me tonight, I have my good friend Dagger. We have our buddies Thunderwhack and It's Just Ian. Say hi to the folks, guys. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? How you doing? So, today we're here to talk a little bit about our favorite topic, relics. Today we're going to talk a little bit about um, characters we think everybody should have or should start working on getting up to our 7 not necessarily for any requirements that are to be future content in the game. Um, but so, stuff that makes your whole roster a much <coughs> more better roster. So, who wants to go first? Well, I, I'll, go, I'll go with the probably the first character, if I were you, to take to Relic 7 is General Grievous. Absolutely. Because you can put him single-handedly in a Separatist team at, at Relic 7 can wipe things out. And he's going to help you in a lot of phases of the game. Grand Arena Championships, Territory Battles, Territory Wars, stuff like that. And on uh, certain nuke teams you use in Arena uh, for whatever shard you're in. He's also just kind of a one-man team, which is the yeah. one of the biggest benefits to him. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need a lot of support around him. In no. fact, you almost want a couple of them to be kind of poopy. So he can, because so, his Zeta will allow them to, him to refresh right away. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's got a capital ship, too. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we can't forget, forget. Yeah, we can't yeah, forget Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ian. Yeah. One that I don't have unlocked, that's why I didn't think about it. So. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's, yeah. nasty, it, it's, yeah. it's fun to play. I will say mm -hmm. that. Really good at low gear. That's one of the reasons I like it. Well, I want to give mine. Um, you're probably uh, not going to think of this one, but I think Old Daka is a must-have for the Night Sisters. I don't know if we're going through you know every faction or not, but no, both of Daka is... and Jolie, I, I think you Oh, guys you said Jolie. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you 100. He was going to be one of the guys right. I brought up because he single-handedly allows you to have a Jedi Knight Revan squad at Gear 12 that can continually survive against other teams because yeah. of him. Yeah, that's pretty much the same reason for, uh, for Daka. I mean... Um, well, today it wasn't a very good showcase of my DACA. I was trying to get a, a counter going versus Grievous, and I just, it didn't work. But uh, <laughs> I had a really bad RNG with the revives. But typically, you can you can either rock a DACA lead, or you can toss a Mother's Housing lead in there. Have you know Gear 12, Gear 11, uh, Night Sisters. You have like a Relic, Mind Relic 5, 130k HP. She like is pretty much invincible. I mean, you, it's really hard to kill her. Um, and you just get you know revive after revive, proccing. Her, uh, her unique with the extra HP. If you have even like another relic, uh, what's her name, Saj in there, she can get a lot more HP. So you can help almost two people alive the entire time with the core zombie. And I mean, you get the stuns as well. It's just, I don't know. I when I when I'm looking at somebody, especially for GAC, I like to always base my things for this for these uh, Gear 13s in GAC, and I guess some TWs. I never really see people with Daka Gear 13, and I, it's always like, well, when I'm like, well, why, why not? I mean, it's yeah. I always check their Daka because Daka is mm -hmm. going to tell me how much effort I have to put into that team. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I do agree. I think Daka to R7 is probably one of the wiser investments. Um, again, because Night Sisters are. They're just always going to be around. Whether they're a B yeah. team, C team, A team, and we can argue semantics all day long on like what relics they have to be at to be an A team, but like they yeah. beat most teams in the game on offense. And they're and still, like, in my they've... opinion, the most unique faction in the game. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say but, they are also yeah. they've kind of always stuck around the meta, kind of like CLS has. Mm -hmm. They've kind mm -hmm. of always just stuck around uh, the meta. You know, properly modded, mm -hmm. you can beat anything almost. I yeah, another thing that I like about um, these Night Sisters is like you can use them on offense, and then you can place like, like for example, if you like had them built for countering Grievous, and you typically would use JKR versus that. Well, guess what? You can either use and keep JKR again, or you can place them on defense. So, I mean, the the banners there, yeah, you're gonna lose some on offense, but it's gonna force an extremely tougher team to counter JKR, which I think is is very very awesome. So I like that a lot. A quick mine is on solo. I think that, and yes, CLS fanboy, I get it. O original trilogy hater, CLS fanboy. <laughs> you figure out that riddle. You figure out that riddle. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's Han. He's one of the first characters you get in the game. Um, I remember characters. when Gear. Yeah, I remember when. Yeah, one of the first unique like 
special. And as, a new, as, an, as a newer player, he's much easier to get now because the the pit raid can be sent yeah. and stuff like that. I remember doing a video with Thunderwack when Gear 13 was like shown, like the stats. Mm-hmm. And yes. it's like he got a thousand offense, which <laughs> then was a huge deal. And then, Relic yeah. came, oh like, my gosh. What's Dagger a thousand offense? Static. <laughs> we were, because he said, because we were like, okay, we're going to, we're going to relic like Darth Revan, or I mean, we're going to take Darth Revan to Gear 13, whatever. And all of a sudden, uh, Dagger tells me, um, you need to look at CLS, Chewie, and Han, and look yeah. at how much damage increases when they go to Gear 13. And we're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> and like, that's the level of excitement I have because like I have this like fascination f- with teams that like do one thing and do it absurdly well which is one of the reasons um so I would say Han because our sevening him dramatically changes the landscape on what that team can beat a gear 12 Han can beat a Bosk an R7 Han can beat every team that is currently in the game yeah. mm-hmm well, you need the you need a supporting cast as well. I mean, you can't just say you need Relic Seven Han. You're gonna need, you know, of course, Chewie and, and CLS if you were to beat, you know, the top tiers. Uh, uh, sure, the sure. And, but I don't. I, but I. I you don't part, have yeah. to. You don't have to have them Relic Seven, in my opinion. Yeah, but it's, yeah. The, it's the same as the Daka argument, in my opinion. We're like, yes. the, if your Han is R seven and your supporting cast, like I would say, Chewie at R five and CLS at R four is like the minimum floor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but. The amount of investment you get for the one R seven is so high. Mm-hmm. Same with like Daka and Joe Lee. Um, being able to shoot first out of the gate with an R seven, <laughs> like it, it. I mean, obviously, this is like my favorite team. Definitely. So <laughs> I think it's a safe bet, um, similar to one that I think Kyle's going to mention. Yeah, um, mine. In, with G, uh, GG and Han, um, and it hasn't been mentioned. JKA, that guy's a monster. Um, it is so much fun just sending him in for an AOE and clearing the board. <laughs> um, and y- you don't even have to mod him that well to even do that. Like his, he, just his, the pure raw power he has. It's it's. It's invigorating, and the fact that I'm pretty sure that it, there was a GAC video last in the last four weeks where JKA won me won beat a, uh, a Darth Mal uh, Darth Revan team by himself because I just had bad RNG or <laughs> maybe half yep. of half of one. I, I it, he he soloed it, just wiped it out. Um, he's, and he's so much fun, you know, getting extra, you know, I, I like characters that get bonus turns for, uh, when, when, when things happen. Um, I also like the fact that to kind of piggyback what you were saying about the bonus turn, I like that. And this is, goes back to Ian t- was the one who kind of championed this team versus Darth Revan. The yes. Padme team. The condition for him to take his bonus turn, like is borderline beneficial for the pad. Once you get all the Zetas on it. Because you're you're likely going to have Padme death mark, which means she's going to get a free turn too. Mm-hmm. Um, it just snowballs. Like the condition isn't hard; it's like half health, and Padme heals fifty percent or whatever. And it's like the condition's like not like it's it's not like General Grievous who takes his bonus turn after someone dies, yeah. right? His bonus turn happens in the like after your barrage, and then mm-hmm. he like gets to go nuts, and I think there's something to be said for like the sustain of like a character like that that I mentioned with Han, where he's just not hard to proc. And in TB, like you take your characters into TB, you get like you take your Padme team in. Their opening barrage gets him to proc. Padme heals, takes the turn right after, and then you're off to the races again. Yeah. And yep. I and I really think the simplicity of his kit because it's not a super complex kit. No, um, it's not. No. I really, really like the simple kits that are good. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's I'm gonna. I have two characters in mind here. I'm, I'm just gonna bring up one of them. Um, I, Bosk. Bosk is a character that I have relicked um, because Ian brought up earlier the importance of ships, and the Houndstooth yep. is still probably the best overall ship in the game in the sense that it can be used in every lineup. 
Houndstooth is going to be used in the Falcon lineup with the home one. It's going to be used in the a negotiator lineup, and you're going to use it in a separatist lineup in some way as well. So not and not only so that's just the first part. I have him uh, relic because the Houndstooth is more powerful, but he, he, I, I know a lot of people like to use Django leads and stuff like that. I still use a boss lead, and I can put him as a leadership when I do. Um, the other thing too, and just to kind of touch on the Houndstooth, CG keeps trying to make faction-specific tanks to push the Houndstooth out, and they keep failing. He's still better than the Y-wing, and he's still better than the hyena bot. It's yes. a little, it's a little, it's a little closer with the hyena bot. Yeah. Um, I, I think pretty much everyone here mentioned a pilot except for Ian. So shame on you, Ian. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> in, in, in fairness to Ian, he Aaron did bring up that General Grievous was a, did have a shot. Yeah, yeah. We're not, I, that. I, yes. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm giving him a hard time because mm. I mean, uh, I think Kyle stole his, stole one of the ones he wanted to name. But I was gonna go with Boss that... Nest, but Bosk next. But I mean, it's all good. Okay. Yeah, the, the Hound Tooth is just it's too good, and especially now with these assault battles and also uh, yeah. some of their counters you can pull Thank off now. Thank you. Yes, the assault battle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's also a he's also a strength tank, I believe. So I believe that gives him. Uh, isn't that the one that gives him crit avoidance? Mm. With the relics, let me look. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. I can pull my. I have it. I have it up right now. He has extra armor, health, steel, and protection. It says. Okay, so it's the <laughs> GK one. Yeah. yeah. The other. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, getting extra protection is good because under boss lead, like I, I think that there's an underrepresentation to a certain degree of bounty hunters because. Boss lead is still like good, but like not great. It's kind of I'll compare them a lot to Night Sisters. They scale with the amount of effort you put into them. Exactly, right. brilliant point. Yep. Yeah, if you have Gear Twelve Bounty Hunters, they're probably not good on defense, and they're probably going to be slightly <clears throat> below average on offense. But if you actually sit down and put the work into your Bounty Hunters Gear Thirteen and put relics on them, put their Zetas on, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna just get this like. I don't want to call it a reward because, like, you 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 just get what you pay for with this team. Anything, but it, 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 it is a reward out. because you you put your time into it and you're rewarded with how they do. Yeah. So so it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the, the bounty hunters and the night sisters. I think you get exactly what you pay for. Yeah. So I, I think Boss yeah. is a very yeah. solid one. And honorable mention with him, I'll I'll I'll, I'll mention uh, Django. I mean, Boba's cool too, but I mean. Django yes, doesn't need Django doesn't need Zetas to be good, and he just benefit like he benefits so much from the relics because he's one of those crit chance crit dam crit chance crit damage damage attackers. Mm -hmm. And like, what more do you want from your attackers? <laughs> yeah. what, to do damage? Yeah. You want your attackers to do damage? What a novel concept. <laughs> Let's say like most of our gear 13s that we're going to be choosing are either going to be tanks or attackers. attackers. Yeah, I, I, I do just want to bring up this this one more character because it's eating at me not saying it. Gene Ocean sure. Brute Alpha. Um, because I mean, you Gene get Ocean, two for one, so what's what's not to love yes. about that? Yes, and, and he, I, you take him to gear 13, you have it at a de decent relic, you have him with the Zetas, the Geonosians can become a yes. They have their counters. Okay, yes, you can you can beat them with Bastila, Jedi Knight, Revan, and um, Atreya team. But they are also pretty good on offense. They're just a solid. I'm not saying they're an A team. I'm not saying they're a C team. They're like a good B team. And I'd having they're pretty um, close to an A team actually. They're pretty solid. Actually. Yeah, I was going to well, say they in can my opinion, actually I would, counter I would, a if lot you, of things. If you get if you take Spy, if you take Geonosian Spy to Gear 13 and have a few relics on them, the damage output is going to help you a lot more. I don't have that yet, so I'm probably not where you guys are at but i definitely think because i'm he single-handedly helps that create that faction if i'm not mistaken I think, I think i have the only relic spy in the chat right now yes sir yes you do I am get, I i'll get there oh man. my god <laughs> i have Honestly, something I think you guys comes, don't i'll get there in Honestly, two years after i'm done farming for <laughs> legends <laughs> i honestly think it comes down to if you acknowledge Coming s tier and if you do it and if you do acknowledge s tier how many teams you put in the s tier to whether mm -hmm. or not you consider geos and most the s tier people you don't need relic or a whole lot of high relics on you know yeah yeah but yeah, that's, that's what saying. Or, so like, yeah. if, if you acknowledge s tier it depends on how many teams you put there but i think i would call geos the genosians a b team because i think the s tier is whatever you use to climb an arena and i think that's like three or four I, that's why i call them b team too because i agree so with i you. mean like yeah. I, I think they're like b plus a minus they're very very good i do yeah. agree they beat a lot of things 
but I think the one downside to them is that they only punch across. And by that, I mean, like, you can't you can't consistently beat a lot of teams with a lot more relics than they have. Yeah. And if you want to go at it at a GAC standpoint, like I always like to do, is defensively, they're not very good. Um, even if, like, you have them all, you know, I wouldn't say all relic seven because that's kind of nuts. But if you have like some of them relic seven or relic up rather, um, GBA inspire the couple I would always see. Um, it's not going to hold that well if you know that a guy is going to be using Trey and Sion. I mean, this is why JC history is now a thing. You, you can see better what they're going to use. And if you know for a fact they're always going to use that, I might um, recommend that you actually save for offense and toss something back, like either JTR or someone else on defense to really throw them off. Um, just because yep. there's so many there's so many counters to those guys right now. Typically just Trey, but. I like to actually keep him on defense anyways because I have a little bit of Padme in the back wall, a sleeper Padme. So it kind of pulls that counter. It's fun. My next one. Yep. So Wat Tambor was one I was going to go for, but that's just an obvious one. And I don't think many many, many new players will have him uh, seven star. It's going to take a while. So I think I'm going to go with Relic 7 Ness um, because <laughs> she can solo a lot of different teams. She can solo um, close to max, if not maxed out Padmes. Um, JKRs without Bastila Sean in them, and she can solo, uh, you know, Ness. Any buff heavy teams in the game, you know, she's gonna be able to solo them. And if you don't want to use her on offense, you can place her on defense. And it is not fun having to now kill a Relic Seven Nest with over, you know, 70, 80, almost 90k um, HP, um, and that the days mechanic and the, the you know the counter attacks. It's just really hard. It's just one of those those uh, those characters that I would really recommend. It's just so good. Yeah, she doesn't have a ship, but she's just so plug and play. And those those great banners you get on offense too. I mean if you think about it, if you know, like I said for GAC, if you know the guy's going to always place his Padma defense, um, you can, you know, bring in Kira, your your nest. Um, if you have Watt, bring in Watt, you know, Hoda. You can beat that team and you can save another team for defense. It's just something so awesome. I love it. Yeah, so Ness is a Ness is a stupid character but in a good way. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Can I just throw um, in one more? I think I have one yeah. more I want to throw in. Yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, this is so this is one I was talking about a little bit ago. I thought this guy was a support. He's not. It's Van or Chewbacca. He's a tank. Um, is he really? Yeah, yes, he tank. is actually labeled in the game as a tank. And his Zeta can make him ridiculously frustrating yes. to deal with. It is insane. This guy, if you guys, if you guys have not seen or heard of Clash, um, he does a lot of theory crafting with the scoundrels, and I think this guy, Vandor Chewy, is one of the best. Um, it's not not just scoundrels, but like pretty much every kind of where you want to use him, he's just so good, um, especially with the scoundrels. I mean, Relic 7, um, I, I had a fight with somebody, I think my GACU last week, that had one that was Relic 7. He tossed him, I think, like a Karth team or something like that. It was weird. But um, he had like 90k HP, and on top of that, good with his... What is it? The beast? You uh, you lose your forty uh, percent of your uh, max protection, but you gain eighty percent HP. So I mean, just think of that. It's going to be ridiculous. And on top of that, whenever <laughs> he is buffed, the enemies they, they deal twenty five percent less damage. And it is the the theory crafting potential with this guy and other scoundrels is insane. Um, like I was saying with with uh, Clash, I'm really I'm giving some love to Clash because this this new team I just saw um, a couple days ago or I guess yesterday has him in it. Um, and also Stormtrooper Haunt in it. And he, rock, he was rocking Stormtrooper Haunt lead with this Van or Chewy. And he gave guard to Stormtrooper Haunt in the lead. Gas does not crit him when, with guard. And then Van or Chewy also heals, um, if, you don't, if you didn't know this, he heals other scoundrel allies based on 10% of his max HP. So if you can just think of that, um, the crazy potential there with just the recovery and, and the protection and then the less damage from enemies, and on top of that, he has a revive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, he's just so good. He's just so, to, so to, good. to kind of piggyback on that, my next one is kind of a twofer. It's Mission and Zalbar. I really love it when CG makes characters that like interact between two people. And when when you build characters like Mission and Zalbar that work so well together, you allow them to be just plugged in places. There's, like, if you put them with Vander Chewbacca, for example, they're both light side scoundrels. They get rezzed, healed. It's just... You have so much assisting. You have... Zalbar is so tanky. Well, the thing with Zalbar, yeah, he's a tank, but, I mean, he is plug-and-play, too. You don't need yep. him with mission. He is so plug-and-play because of this yeah. is unique. He oh, no, has I, stacking yeah. defense. It is insane. I mean, oh, if I you agree. think about it, it is it's disgusting. It really is. 
And he's scoundrel too. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just also love fishing. With... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that's all I'm trying to say is I love that the I, I, it was also kind of trying to go for the two character synergies like oh, yeah. Resistance Finn and Resistance Poe. Right, like the new the hero, the resistance, yeah, 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 yeah. resistance yeah. heroes. I like it when you take two characters and you just make them just blatantly just feed off peanut of butter each jelly other. guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can use them individually. I'm not saying you can't, but I really love how you do that. And then on top of that, Mission does so much damage when you relic her, and Zalbar is just like one of the best. I think he might be the best plug and play tank in the game that like doesn't have like a team that we would consider like an A level team. And they're needed to get. Uh, Darth Revan as well. So, Malik. Malik. Malik, that's what I mean. So it's not, you're not throwing away anything like that if you're concerned. Yeah. And I, I don't know like the limited characters we're supposed to bring up, but I have one more character I want to bring up. And I'm going to, it's probably not as necessary to take to Relic 7 as need be, but it's General Kenobi. Um, yeah. And it's, it's because he's used in so many different teams in so many different ways. I Obviously he's in the Padme team right now is the best team he's in. But also, he has the negotiator. He has a ship just like Grievous does, and that makes a big difference. So I, am, I, am I saying when you take him to Relic 7, it's going to be like a Han Solo where he completely changes the entire team? No, but it, he does raise his protection. It does, it does make him a better character, and it helps the negotiator. Or the, yeah, his negotiator as well. Yeah, I, he was – he's another one of those where he's just like stood the test of time. Yeah, and he's he's never gone away. The the last one I wanted to bring up is, is we don't even have a kit for him. We've all bitched about them for like at least a week week or two now. <laughs> uh, apparently, you're gonna need Rose, the Galactic Legends. You're these characters are literally built to be R seven. Yeah. yeah, or at least they better be. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Might be a stretch. Yeah, I, I think the R. I, I, I think or we're maybe gonna. This is the, maybe these are the characters that at R seven they unlock a special ability, their ultimate ability or something. Maybe yeah, that's I, what they were testing with Treya. Yeah. Any anything else you wanted to touch on, guys? I wanted to mention my last. Uh, oh right. Yes. My my last uh, recommendation to R seven. Um, she's not overly outstanding. She's kind of goes partially with GK and, and Jedi Knight Anakin. Um, Ahsoka, she's constantly assisting. The The damage she does is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and B, B1 would be another honor, probably honorable mention for me to take to R7 because he's constantly assisting he's just putting raw damage on the board but ahsoka yeah. uh i i chose ahsoka over b1 because she also has a ship yeah. <laughs> they're by the way to both those characters are good, great characters to relic yeah so it's you're not wasting on any of them but i agree with you on ahsoka i i, I think you should look at any character that takes more turns than what they have so i mean <laughs> cls fanboy let's stop it. <laughs> Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right like no I, yeah. I i'm serious like i think that it's always worth looking into them because yeah. you're just, especially the attackers that attack out of turn or assist like it's it's so much it's so much extra damage when you r7 them when or even just relic them up a little bit um i've lost to like a b1 plus grievous before because or yeah. no b1 plus b2 B2 doesn't do anything, but B1 assists him, gets all those extra turns. Um, e Echo is another character uh, that, yes. that assists a lot, and you know, because yep. uh, along with the new arc trooper and the turret, you know, n uh, your your point is exactly correct. Look at yep. those characters because they're going to be doing yep. more damage throughout the battle than everybody else because of their assists. Yeah. I think my last thought before we end the video here is, by the way, who would be pumped if the Bad Batch would come to the game? Yeah, I don't even know who those people are. Have you you haven't uh, seen the new Clo Clone Wars uh, episode, Ian? Uh, I haven't watched any in a couple months. I'm still on season three. Okay. Okay. Well, then then so it would make basically, sense. basically, it's a group of four clones that can go under shock tea. So I'm all for making my paper <laughs> with shock tea. <laughs> there you go. Gen right? They're genetically, accidentally genetically altered clones that are like monsters. 
My like, quick uh, question is okay. what happened. Gotcha. My quick question is what happened to the ones that didn't have positive deformities? Uh, they helped like ninety nine when he had to help no, clean I, up everything. I, I, <laughs> I know I didn't want a real answer. I to <laughs> Spoiler alert! I know the, jan- the, janitor. the janitor clone. The jan- yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I remember watching. Yeah, he died, didn't he? Yes, he yeah. did. Correct. Yeah. The guy. Barely... But no, I, I would love to see him, mostly because I have a double Zeta Gear Twelve shock tee that is a paperweight. <laughs> Hey guys, if you're just now finishing the video, I want to appreciate it. Um, It's been a great time with Thunderwack and Ian, hanging out with them, talking about their opinions. Um, And hopefully with this video, you guys, it helps all you guys listening and watching uh, make some some hard decisions. Uh, You're giving up a lot of uh, resources to get these characters to R7, um, and there's a lot of payoff in them. Uh, so I hope this helps you. If you like Thunderwack or It's Just Eden, their links are down in the description. If you like this video and w- I want more content, uh, please hit, let us know in the comments. Give us a like, a subscribe, and let us know what you want to see. Um, stay tuned for our GACs uh, this week. And... May the force be with you.